the fact we have to remember is that initiation of mechanical ventilation through intubation is quite often an emergency procedure. And if you look at the current situation of the COVID-19 pandemic, there may be patients who come to you who are uh, happily hypoxemic but suddenly deteriorate. So you might have to intubate them in an emergency procedure. So your awareness of the complications which are associated should be very good and you should be preempting some of these problems which you can expect during mechanical ventilation. The reason why this is so important is the fact that most of these patients who require emergency ventilatory support or ventilatory support for a respiratory problem have abnormal physiological parameters. So the blood pressures may not be normal, heart rates may not be normal, their acid-base balance may not be normal, and their oxygenation is anyway uh, not uh, normal. So their response to a stress of initiation of mechanical ventilation would be different from an elective preoperative patient whom you are trying to induce for anesthesia. The second important point in the background which you need to keep is that you are instrumenting an air, a, a body system. So you are actually instrumenting the upper airway and trying to deliver something or uh, gas or air to the lower airways. And any instrumentation has to be dealt with caution and any instrumentation is fraught with problems of damage and injuries and complications if we are not keenly observant of the policies and protocols for achieving uh, an, a clean initiation of mechanical ventilation. And it is also known that some of the drugs which you use for facilitating this uh, process of initiation of mechanical ventilation are also associated with some complications, especially because of the background unstable physiological parameters. So whether it is the sedatives you use, the neuromuscular blockade you use, or any of the other drugs which we use during the process of mechanical ventilation could result in some of the complications which you often find in these patients. All said and done, you are actually connecting the patient to the machine, and machines are fraught to be malfunctioning. So a malfunctioning machine, an inappropriately set machine, or a machine is, which is not responding to the settings which you have put or is responding adversely to uh, the settings which you have put is likely to cause problems uh, to the, uh, the person who is receiving mechanical ventilation. So if you keep all these things in mind, it boils down to the fact that initiation of mechanical ventilation is obviously a skill-based technique. So the more you do, the more you see, the more complications you'll encounter, and the more careful you will be. But in this pandemic situation, that is not something any everybody can expect to. In a stable situation, yes, the best hands in the business would come and help you to set up the ventilator support. But in this pandemic situation, where healthcare facilities may be stretched and overwhelmed uh, in uh, at, a, at some point of time, everybody needs to be aware of the uh, the common, easily anticipatable problems of mechanical ventilation. So having known the background uh, against which these complications can happen, let us look at when these complications can happen. These complications can happen at any point of time till the patient actually leaves your intensive care unit. It can happen during the procedure, they can happen immediately after you have intubated the patient. They could happen in the short term, that means in the first 48 to 72 hours of initiation of ventilator support. They could happen long term. If you look at the COVID patients, the data seems to suggest that the average length of stay of these patients is anything between 14 to 17 days if they require invasive ventilator support. So long term complications are also and to be anticipated in patients on whom you have initiated mechanical ventilation. It doesn't end there. I mean, you can actually have problems related to the process of ventilation and intubation during and immediately after uh, extubation. So uh, you have initiated ventilator support, everything went well, and you try to get the patient off the machine, and then you get the tube off, you could find some of these complications after extubation as well. So our vigilance should not end with the extubation of the patient. We need to be observing them uh, for some period of time 
uh, after extubation as well. So when you say that there can be complications and when we say that complications can happen at any point of time, including after extubation, what are these complications which can happen? So you can broadly divide these complications into procedural problems like failed intubation, injuries to the uh, oral cavity, mucosa, dental trauma, which is a grievous injury. All these can happen, failed intubation. That's the most disastrous thing that can happen in a patient who's already compromised from his physiological parameters perspective. Uh, and then you fail to intubate him, you could be in trouble for these patients. And because we are de relying on mechanical uh, stuff like endotracheal tubes, ancillary equipment, circuits and machines, mechanical problems and mechanical complications can also happen related to any of these uh, items in, during the process of initiation of mechanical ventilation. There could be some systemic complications which probably are the most highlighted and well known as far as mechanical ventilation are concerned, which could be infective as well as non-infective. When you are intubating a patient, you are breaching some of the natural defenses of the patient. You are making his upper airways more amenable for colonization. And from there, the lower airways could get infected. So they could be, but the non-infective complications probably happen as frequently as the infective complications also. Locally, you could produce ulcers over a long period of time. And then if the tube stays uh, in for a longer period of time, you could end up with stenosis and post extubation vocal cord edema. To facilitate ventilatory support, especially when the oxygenation is bad and you are using uh, different permutations and combinations of ventilatory support, you have to use a lot of sedation and maybe sometimes neuromuscular blockade. While these are essential for delivery of good mechanical ventilatory support, it, they could result in long-term problems as well, like benzodiazepine withdrawal, like an opioid withdrawal, and neuromuscular blockade could end up with critical illness polyneuromyopathy. So these are all the long-term problems related to drugs, which can you can anticipate and predict in patients who have been subjected to mechanical ventilation. 